Okay, welcome to the Sphere IT podcast. We're broadcasting from the Shortech Insights in London. Today, I've invited a Mikolai Kromka from Virtus Lab, one of the data experts in the business, a consultancy firm that I also work for as my day job. Welcome, Mikolai. Um, Hello, can Peter. you tell me a little bit about your background, please? Yeah, so hi, thank you for having me here. Um, so currently I'm leading the data department at Virtus Lab, and we're providing data and software in data services to, to various customers around the world. Um, you know, and I've been doing that for the past, uh, in data, past seven years. Um, and uh, general software and IT consultancy, this is something I've been doing for more than 12 years now. Um, so what, have, got you, what got you into data? Why did you move from software to data? And yes, the, so uh, I, you know, I, I'm a computer scientist. Uh, my university background is in computer science. Um, so I did various uh, different uh, backend type of uh, jobs in the past. So I did some Java development, some Scala development. And because I was you know, uh, focused on the Scala, uh, which was a modern language back then, uh, I almost immediately moved to the big data world with the Apache Spark, which is written in, in, in Spark, uh, in Scala. And then uh, afterwards, the, the biggest software challenges were actually in AI and uh, in machine learning. So I moved into that area as well. I did uh, some uh, university courses on statistics as well, just to you know get a grasp of that wow. Uh, wow. as well. Um, and then I'm trying currently I'm trying to combine you know both the data and AI because they they um, uh, they are both important. You can't have a proper AI model without proper data, a good uh, data with good quality. So it's all connected. So I'm trying to focus uh, on on all of those aspects. Yeah. So data covers. A lot of different elements, you know, you've got um, BI, analytical, operational, it's a very complex space. Which part do you really like getting involved with and which parts in the modern world excite you today about that space? So I, I think there are two most uh, interesting parts currently. So one is, of course, Gen AI. Not only Gen AI, but AI in general, uh, because this is... Um, the, those uh, t this type of advanced analytics is something new, relatively new. Well, it's you know ten years almost now, uh, but it's still relatively new uh, across companies. So there are lots of business value, lots of business value that can be uh, brought by the AI by introducing AI solutions. The second aspect is um, data governance and uh, how to handle growing data sets and data sources uh, in large companies, especially. If you um, if you acquire you know, um, some other companies, so how do you merge those uh, platforms, data analytical data platforms together? What can you do? How to uh, bring as much value from the data uh, hidden in both of those platforms or multiple data platforms? Sure. So we're moving from what effectively is a collect data paradigm to a connect data paradigm. Things like data mesh. Is that something that you're, that you're excited about, something that interests you? And do you see it happening a lot in business at the moment? Yeah, so, so yeah, glad that you said about data mesh. So yeah, it's one, one of the, the, the approaches, one of the trends that we see. It's actually, no, it's not, uh, not really new because I think it was um, the, the, the first article of data mesh is around 2018, maybe. Um, lots of we see that lots of companies are introducing either data mesh or some other form of a distributed uh, data model, data architecture. And um, this is really nice. This is uh, in comparison to um, centralized data platform. There are lots of benefits, you know, treating data as a product. It's much easier to, to scale uh, creation of those data products. But on the other hand, there is still, you know, the currently and fairly recently, yeah, I, I would like to say, um, uh, people started um, analyzing, you know, the value chain problem. So if you have uh, lots of da data products, and each team is, uh, is responsible for a different data product. How do you bring value that encompasses multiple pro data products? So you have a separate, for example, uh, I know policy uh, product, you have separate customers product, you would like to join them together to bring some value. And it's not easy to do so, right? Because there are different SLAs, different requirements for those products. And it really requires um, strate strategical thinking about delivering those products. Sure. So if, if you were looking at that kind of uh, an insurance business that wants to combine customer data with policy data more effectively, or they want to build a better premium or price for the products that they're selling, 
what, where do they need to start with their data generally? Where, where's a good place to start in your experience in making that plan? Is it a technical discussion or no. is it more operational? So uh, technology is, is important aspect here, but it's not the, 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 the most crucial one. Uh, because the data mesh and all, in general the, the distributed approach to uh, or decentralized approach to, to data governance and data handling um, it's more related about change in, from the business side from the uh, from the company side so sure. how do you uh, define those teams uh, what kind of skill sets do you need what, how the, um, uh, who's responsible for the overall picture um, so usually you know, traditional uh, elements like you know domain driven design where you split those responsibilities into domain entities similar to what happened in microservices like 5 years ago it's it's still important but you need to have a governing body uh, on top of that uh, so you you would like to the, the companies need to you know um, from bottom up grow those data products be able to define those data products but there should be one a specialized governing body that uh, is responsible for making sure that it, you know, it's aligned. Right. So that would be a good starting step to get that governance model in place, a new operating model, decide if you're going to go domain driven or not, those kind of things. Definitely. Right. I also come from, you know, a software craftsmanship background. Um, and we, we did lots of different uh, projects related to improving the, the quality of the software that we delivered to be, for it to be maintainable, reliable, um, and I think those uh, things happen a bit slower, uh, more slowly in uh, data area. So things like data quality, you know, th there are different frameworks and tools and approaches to verify data quality. But I think we'll still, we, we are still not in the, um, uh, in the phase that software development is in. Sure. And we definitely need to introduce those um, good practices from software into data. Mm. And, and do you see the, the, the businesses, your, your clientele, are looking at it that way or are you finding that you're educating them into that path? Well, well, we are educating them, but we see a general trend that, you know, they, they see the, the issues, uh, they, they are facing some issues, for example, with data quality or, you know, with uh, challenges uh, related to deployment. You have multiple data pipelines and you can't deploy one of them because it breaks the other ones. Some of those challenges can be addressed by, um, by tools that we have already in data, but not all of them. Um, data products uh, in, in this decentralized approach with, for example, data contracts is one way of, of handling that, but it's not enough. Sure. Understood. Understood. Okay. So going back to Gen AI as a, a final thought around this, where do you see it going? Where do you think it's going to benefit you in your job as an engineer? Yeah. That's a good question. So uh, I think there are, uh, you know, Gen AI is a fairly new thing, especially across companies. But we've been working with uh, AI in general for the past, I don't know, seven or eight, eight years. And there are lots of uh, similarities between Gen AI and, you know, more, uh, more traditional AI, so to say. Um, there are lots of challenges. Usually there are two main challenges. You know, it's not enough to have a good model. First of all, you need to have a good data for the model. Sure. So data quality is really a, a, a huge challenge. You, you know, there is the saying garbage in, garbage out yeah. in, in AI. So if you put uh, low quality data, then the output will be low quality. Uh, the second thing is all of the uh, machine learning operations and uh, machine learning engineering. It's easy you know, to use, a, uh, to create a model, machine learning model, but it's really hard to uh, bring it to production. Yeah. Uh, I hear that a lot. I mean, but what, what are the the dynamics of that in real terms? What are the considerations that become the problem? Yeah. So originally, um, data scientists were separated from data engineers. So data scientists were creating some machine learning models, you know, in notebooks on local machines, on a subset of data, just analyzing different different possibilities. Um, and then they, they were throwing over, so to say, uh, those models, those notebooks, to data engineers or to, to software engineers to re-implement them. And uh, it's uh, time consuming. This is, I think, first challenge. And secondly, there is um, uh, lots of things can be lost uh, sure. in this translation. Um, so um, currently, you know, there are uh, various different models that you can use uh, just, you know, off the shelf models, but bringing them into production, for example, making sure that the, the process of deployment of such model is reliable or that, or, or that the model can scale uh, and handle the, uh, the growing number of users 
this is something that uh, that is really challenging and you need some software and engineering uh, knowledge to, to handle that. Yeah, I mean, the way I see it and, I, and how I've viewed it over the last few years is that AI in general or data science of scale or machine learning at scale has always been applied to insight-based work. I think there's a lot of opportunity in automation in that space, not just insight. So do you see there's a general trend across the com companies that you're working with where they're using it for insight, but they're also saying, I can automate my process using machine learning and I've got a very good business integration strategy. So the people using the AI are going to get a benefit. Are, are you seeing that and, or do you see there's challenges around that? Yes, the, the, definitely. So, you know, um, I think this is one of the transformations that we're currently involved in uh, as, as a, you know, um, as IT companies in general that you have those analytical data platforms um, that are separated from, um, from transactional or operational uh, systems. Um, and then uh, you would like to use those insights from the analytical data platforms in your daily operations. And this is, this is really, really um, good for companies because it can bring them a value. Uh, but on the other hand, the the analytical data platforms are, you know, they are not created with tools or, and, or technologies that allow uh, for such uh, cooperation. So it's not easy to use a, an analytical data platform where, you know, you analyze lots of data sets. It takes time. Usually this is a batch processing and you would like to use that in a real time scenario, for example, for rec product recommendations on the website. There are different patterns of handling that um, and we, we are exploring uh, many of them. Uh, but I think this is a, a really challenging aspect. Right, okay, good, good. Look, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thanks ever so much for your time and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.